Hey, man, this is good. This is good. Come back in. Come back in. And Joseph was the governor over the land. This is what the promise looked like. And he it was who sold to all the people. So this is definitely promised because he was over the land and he sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brother came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. My goodness. Joseph had an opportunity to be lifted up in, proud, in pride. Yep. Joseph had an opportunity to be lifted up in pride because it says, and Joseph was the governor over all the land and Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. So Joseph could have took pride in that. Why, why would he take pride? Well, number one, this was the same brothers that sold him off into slavery. These was the same people that had did him wrong. These was the same people that had told his dad that he had gotten murdered by an animal. These are the same people that even contemplated killing him. Come on now. They contemplated killing him. And, and Joseph was not mute. Joseph was not deaf. Joseph heard these communications. He heard these conversations quite likely. Okay. And so it says, and Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. So not only was these his, his used to be his enemies, not only was these his old adversaries, but Joseph had already had a dream stating that they would bow down to him. So Joseph could have gotten lifted up in pride. Joseph could have said, man, look at what y'all thought was going to happen to me. And he could have taken God's glory. He could have thought that he did this on his own. But we're going to fast forward and we're going to skip to see how Joseph really handled it. But what Joseph did, you guys, and it's right here, and it says where Joseph began to reveal to his brothers who he was. And he began to cry. And it says in Genesis 45. So instead of Joseph getting lifted up in pride, Joseph in Genesis 45 chapter 1, it says, Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them who stood by him. So these are all his people that work under him. Okay. And he cried, caused every man to go out from me. He said, cause every man to go out for me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brothers. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father yet live? And his brothers could not answer him, for they were troubled at, this pre at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brothers, come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. He said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. So Joseph had not forgot. He said, now, therefore, be not grieved. He began to comfort them. Be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve your life, to preserve life. He said, for these two years has the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which, which there shall neither be earring nor harvest, harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me hither, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler, oh my gosh, throughout all the land of Jacob. So y'all, in close, we begin to see that, number one, God used Joseph's enemies. And that's why he said, submit yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Because sometimes God's hand desires to use your enemies to push you, to prick you, to bring you right to the place where he's getting ready to exalt you. Another thing we realize that, so we learn submission in this case. The next thing that Joseph demonstrates for us is forgiveness. The very people that meant 
evil, the very people who met his demise. Because right now there are people meeting and conjuring together, talking about how you're not going to make it out of this. Probably praying against your promise. Come on now, because if Jacob, if Joseph's brothers um, conjured up to kill him, imagine what strangers are doing. Can we be real? Let's be real. And so, but Joseph even then forgave them. And what bigger hurt? I mean, you can take it better from a stranger, but a family. So that's the deepest, that's the deepest test of forgiveness. So the character that is fit for the promise is the ability to submit yourselves even to your adversary. Understanding that you are not doing it unto man, but you are doing it under God. You're doing it unto God. And if God uses your adversary, then if Joseph would have resisted his brothers, if he would have fought his brothers back, if he would have killed his brothers, then he never would have made it to Egypt to be the governor, the ruler of the land. So he had to submit to his adversaries. But how many of you know that when he submitted, it was only for a season? Praise God. Jo Joseph gave God the glory and did not walk. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And so not only did he submit and not only are we to submit, but we are to submit ourselves and to forgive our adversaries. Understanding, just like Joseph said, Joseph said, you guys didn't, didn't send him. He said, told his brothers that they didn't send him. He said, God allowed that to happen. Look at the bigger picture. Don't think small. Don't think petty. There is a promise that's awaiting. So you can't be looking at what's in front of you. Look at the mighty hand of God. He told them, he said, no, you guys didn't do this. He said, God allowed this so that I might preserve life. So that he could be in the in the role of a ruler, so that he could save and have the heart of God to be able to do it in the wisdom and knowledge of God. So that's number two. The third thing is just like Miss Pamela Arbonat said, at the moment that it was set up that he could have lifted himself up in pride. He could have said, now look at how I worked myself back up. Look at how, what they took from me and look at what I made, how I made this work. But he did not do that. No, 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 no. Because he understands now, and as we do, the Bible says that God resists the proud. The Bible says that pride comes before the fall, but God exalts the humble. And so at the moment where he could have lifted himself up in pride, he humbled himself. And instead of saying, look at what y'all did to me, and now they got to come and bow down to him. What Joseph did was, at that moment, he began to weep. He began to cry out. He began to wail so loud that all his servants heard him. He became transparent. He revealed his brokenness. He took off his robe of being the governor and humbled himself to his true feelings and he cried out. Come on now, y'all. True, true pride will not let you look weak. That's the reason why some of us can't get our breakthrough. Because we so busy in church trying to look like we got it together, trying to keep our makeup in place. Because that's pride. We don't want to let the people next to us know that we're going through something, that we're human, that we feel a certain kind of way. But Joseph, right after these people had bowed down to him, just as his dream said that they would, he could have gotten all stuffed up. But you know what? When they bowed down, he went low. How did he, got, how did he go low? He began to show his emotions. He humbled himself right to where they was at. And he began to comfort them and told them, be not grieved, but told them that he was Joseph and comfort them and said that it was not what they did. It was not what they meant for evil, but God had worked it out for his, for his good. This man had so much character that at a time where some of us would have said, I never let them see me cry. I never let them see me down. At that time, he cried out the more. He cried in front of his servants. He cried in front of the people that worked underneath him. You know, some people as supervisors, you try to be strong for, the, for your staff members. But he said, no, forget that. I'm going to humble myself even before my enemies. I'm going to humble myself even before my adversaries. 
And that is the character of the promise. I challenge you tonight that if your promise has not come to pass, and I know that the enemy tried to mess with the broadcast because this is just so good, but if your promise has not come to be, if you're still walking around with a birthright like Jacob or even a birthright of a coat of many colors, meaning that you have the favor for it, but the promise has not yet manifested, I challenge you tonight to ask yourself, have you humbled yourself to the elders? Have you submitted yourselves one to another? Have you humbled yourselves before the mighty hand of God that in due season God would exalt you? I challenge you, would you stop comparing yourselves to what your family do or what your family said or, or what your friends do? Have you allowed yourself to come face to face with the character and the will of God for your life? I challenge you, would you stop looking at who talked about you, who gossiped, who won't let the door open for you because they're jealous of you? Would you stop looking at your brother and begin to look within and ask yourself, is it my character? Is it my inability to submit to that husband that that I don't feel comfortable submitting to? I challenge yourself to ask yourself, or is it your inability to submit to that supervisor that knows less than you do? I challenge you to take a look at your character and ask yourself, is it your character that is holding up your birthright from being made manifested into the promise? God bless you. I hope this bless you tonight as the word bless me. Go forth with peace, love, joy, happiness, humility. Be clothed in humility. Submit yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Have a spirit of obedience as you walk in authority, understanding this, that though you might be shamed today, embarrassed today, feel weak today, broken today, oh my gosh, just like Joseph was raised up to become ruler of the land, God will take that humility, that submission, because we know that things often work the opposite way in the kingdom. God says to sow your tithes, and that's how you get more back. But if you humble yourself and go low, my goodness, God himself will lift you up. And that is how your birthright becomes your promise. God bless you. Love you, Miss Pamela Arbonat. Have a good night and see you soon.